squeak on the cassette. The tape was kind of the last format that we had where you didn't really skip through it. Like you threw it on and you listened to it. I think because of that fact, it put a little bit more of an emphasis on making a, a solid album from front to back, you know. Most consumers gave up on cassette tapes years ago. Luke Thorderson isn't one of them. The professional DJ from Oakland, California has a collection of more than 600 cassettes, and he's always in the hunt for more. It's got a big n nostalgia factor, factor to it. Um, for me, just because that was the format that I listened to music on growing up. In an age of digital downloads, cassette tapes are an endangered species. Sony stopped shipments of the iconic Walkman in Japan this year, and the Oxford English Dictionary says it is removing the term cassette player from its concise dictionary. The format fell out of fashion in the 90s, replaced by CDs and MP3s. Music Thank fans you. said bye-bye to tangled tape and poor audio quality. But cassette connoisseurs hear things differently. Tapes, I mean, they sound a million times better than an MP3 ever would. If you have a decent tape deck and good speakers, I mean, it's going to sound so much better, I mean, in terms of like warm analog sound um, than an MP3 ever will. So start with the master, load them all up, make sure they're all in position. Even some music pros are returning to tape's flat tones and fuzzy hiss. I see uh, tape hiss as part of the medium. It's what makes it, it's what makes it unique and gives it its own sort of character. A few years ago, Billy Sprague noticed that many of his musician friends had backlogs of recordings but couldn't afford CD or vinyl distribution. So he started Sanity Muffin, a cassette-only label in Oakland. Cassettes average $2.50 per tape to produce and sell for $5 to $7. Everything is like labor of love, all put together by hand, all dubbed on our duplicating machines here. The lo-fi aspect of cassette production appeals on a lot of levels to musicians, especially when budgets are tight. I like the idea that like this can um, like record and play like all in the same thing. You could just record, rewind, and it's all there. Kyle Field produced two albums on cassette tape earlier this year. One of them was recorded in a yurt near Big Sur and released a few weeks later. Just the immediacy of being able to make a new thing and then have it out in the world so soon was really exciting. In the subculture of cassette fans, the tapes are striking a chord. James Costello picked one up at a recent Little Wings performance in San Francisco. Well, I still have a cassette tape player in my car, so uh, if I ever listen to my iPod, I always put it through the cassette player too, so you know, it's fun to just use it for what it's meant to be used for sometimes too. Of course, not everyone appreciates the tape revival. The only reason it's a fad is, is nostalgia. And like, like na 90s nostalgia is, is very big right now. But Billy Sprague finds beauty in the tale of the tape. Sometimes, you know, uh, you know, the degradation of the tape being played a million times in all your cassette players sort of has like a, it gives the sound sort of a patina and really sort of um, starts to sound maybe even better as age goes on. For the Wall Street Journal, this is Lauren Rutzer in San Francisco.